Welcome. Thanks for having me here. My name is Jamie Cochran. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at a company called Echelon Front, and we're a leadership consultancy. So we help businesses and organizations and teams and leaders in every capacity around the world uh, learn leadership and how to apply these principles in their business, in their lives, in their communities, and uh, within themselves. Can you talk to the kids a little bit about your background, about how you got into the business of leadership being the Chief Operating Officer over at Echelon Front? Yeah, I actually uh, kind of got here through some relationships. I actually, prior to this, I was in higher education. I was a, an event planner on a major university. So I had some leadership components because I ran a board of 60 students um, and they were responsible for all of the programming on campus. So all the big concerts and events and fun block parties and things of that nature, we, we did there on that campus. And um, so I got a really good opportunity to work with students, to work in a field that I love. Uh, the event planning, the excitement around different things happening all the time was really exciting. Um, and then my husband, who was in the military um, and deploying at that time and, and uh, very interesting lifestyle, um, he got out of the military, went to business school. And so in that two year period, I had the opportunity to kind of reevaluate what I wanted for myself. I loved working with students. I loved the leadership aspect. Um, and it was actually through a relationship that my husband had working at the SEAL teams that I had uh, an opportunity to meet our co-founder um, and him and his business partner were uh, writing a book at the time. And I got really excited about their mission, their desire to help leaders learn some hard leadership lessons that they learned in combat and more importantly, how to apply it in their lives. Um, and so I just kind of put my foot in the door and said, hey, I'm here, I wanna help, whatever that looks like, I wanna help and provide and contribute to this mission. Uh, and I actually took a couple steps backward in my career process to get there. Um, I went from leading a team, managing a team, having multiple staff underneath me at uh, San Diego State University, which is the uh, university I was at, to a part-time admin assistant at Echelon Front. And it was just me and our two co-founders, uh, Leif Babin and Jocko Willink. And um, I just kind of committed to really doing that part-time role really well and creating a place for myself here at this company. And it was a year later that the book they wrote, Extreme Ownership, came out to the masses. And uh, the success of that book really launched an opportunity for me to be full-time at this organization and to build and to really uh, become a partner in what we were doing here and help to grow a team here at Echelon Front. So I've been here eight years and I will uh, I will be here till I retire, uh, if, if that ever comes to that, because I love what I do and it's really exciting to be a part of this company, but to be a part of what we're doing too um, on a day to day. It's awesome. Now, you talk a little bit about uh, loving what you do, and it sounds a lot like you pursued your passions. And so could you maybe speak on that for the kid, kids as somebody is so successful like yourself in a leadership role? Um, why it's important for the kids to have that balance and pursue something that that kind of sets their soul on fire. I really think what it comes down to is that you can't get so fixated on this is the path, this is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to go do. Some people that works. For me, um, growing up, I had my hand in a million different things. And the downside of that is that I wasn't ever the expert in any of those things, but I got this well-rounded experience to really explore what really got me excited, what I liked, what I was good at, where could I bring value. Um, and so I had a, I've had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do at 19. And that changed when I was 20 and it changed when I was 21 and changed when I was 22. And I think if you open yourself up to the opportunities and taking on new things and doing your best to do those things well, you'll find yourself in the right spot with the right people. And that happened with me. I had multiple other jobs prior to my opportunity here at Echelon Front. All of them gave me insights and lessons and things that I could take with them. They also taught me things that I didn't want to do or things that I recognized I wasn't good at, which helped me then navigate to a place where I could provide my unique skills and my unique experience to really drive value within an organization and a team. So I think it's more about being open-minded and trying a, a, a lot of things. You don't have to have it all figured out at 19 or 18 or 16 or whatever uh, it might be. Uh, just being willing to try new things, um, but making sure that when you do that, you do it to your absolute best ability and work hard. You cannot substitute hard work um, in the value that you learn and, and the lessons that you learn and building relationships with people and getting some experiences. And that, that mindset led me to an opportunity to be a part of an organization that, as I said before, I will, I will, I will be here until I, I leave this career um, and move on in my life because I, I love it so much. 
So you had mentioned about motivation. And so if some of these kids were to ever find themselves in uh, a leadership type role, do you find that motiva- motivating the people that you're leading can, can be difficult? And if so, what kind of advice would you have for the kids uh, in that scenario? Yeah, I actually think motivation is kind of meaningless. I really do. I think it really comes down to this idea of discipline. And we have a phrase here, we use it at Echelon Front, and it's called discipline equals freedom. And it sounds so like two opposing forces. You have discipline, which is thought of as rigid and stuck and harsh. And then you have freedom, which is what we all want. Um, we all want to be financially free, have the freedom to buy and purchase things that we want in our lives and have that freedom to buy a house someday or to do the things financially we want in our lives. But in order to do that, we have to be disciplined. We have to be disciplined in how we spend money that we don't spend without our means. We all want more free time. In order to have that, you have to be more disciplined in how you manage your time. Are you spending hours a day looking at cat videos on YouTube? Or are you doing the things on your checklist that you need to do to be successful and to progress towards that goal? Um, we all want the freedom to be physically able to do the things that we want to do, whatever that might be for you. And in order to do that, you have to be disciplined in how you take care of yourself and how you, how you, you know, whatever, whatever that looks like for you. So I think that for me, motivation only lasts a short amount of time and you can get really excited about something and be motivated by something, but that dwindles. And what doesn't dwindle is the consistency and the discipline that we create in our life that we can always go back to that will put us back on the path when we get awry. Um, So more so than motivation for me, it's about the discipline. And if we can create really healthy habits and we can just work hard, we can build really good relationships and get opportunities to have a lot more control of the things in our life. That's great advice. Great advice. Is it okay if we just jump right into some student questions? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the kids wanted to know what, what is your, in your opinion, what is the most important value that a leader can have? Hands down humility. Hands down humility. We talk about humility is the number one quality in a leader. When I hire people at Echelon Front, when I look for people that I want to work with or partner with at Echelon Front, it's looking for people who are humble because if someone is humble, they are able to see and recognize where they need to, where they need to improve, what they need to do to get better. And they're more able to see the truth and what's going on. Our ego, which can be a good thing, can drive us to do really good things, can push us to want to win and be successful. Our ego can be a really good motivator. Uh, but if we don't learn how to check our ego, if we don't learn how to subordinate our ego, our ego likes to tell us lies and will tell us things and convince us that we need to be right, convince us that the other person is wrong and we need to make sure that they know that. It will convince us to create friction in our relationship. So humility is hands down what we consider to be the most important quality of a leader because it's only if you're humble do you recognize where you need to improve, that you're able to self-assess, that you're able to recognize what your competition is doing so you can manage that. If you can't check your ego, you can't self-assess. You can't, you get complacent in what you're doing. And the other really important part of that is being willing to take what we call extreme ownership, which means that every failure, every challenge, every issue you come across, if you can have that first mindset that, hey, this is my fault, I contributed to this problem, and more importantly, I can take ownership in solving this problem, and that's a big part of humility. Those two things will help you beyond measure solve the problems that you'll face in your life, whether it's in school, in your business, or in your home life as well. Uh, one of the kids, I just got an email from one of the kids, they wanted to know, could you speak on who your favorite leader was growing up, who had the most impact and influence on you? Yeah, this one seems like a a really, you know, um, standard answer. But in truth, my the biggest example I had was my mother. Uh, my mother was, uh, a, she worked full time. She worked for uh, the United States Workers of America. She worked there for 35 years. She showed up every single day. I don't think she ever took a day off um, unless she was seriously sick. Um, And yet she was there in the stands every single time I had an activity or performance, a sporting event, whatever it was. She was there at dinner time, sitting around the table, having conversations. And so she she managed for me um, 
the reality of what it could look like to have a full-time career and impact the people around you in, in, in a successful career, but also make sure that you manage and took care, take care of your family. So she was by far my greatest example of leadership because she led in our, in our home and she led in her work as well. She stood up uh, the Women of Steel organization, part of that uh, program where they would run annual conferences to help and empower women to feel confident in this male dominated field to step up and lead and take leadership positions. So um, she would take me out at these work events, take me out on the picket lines when they would do strikes. And I just got to see her in her element. And she was such an incredible example to me. Um, and if you ask me that question nowadays, it's hands down also, in addition to my mom, our co-founder, Jocko Willink, if you don't know much about him, uh, he's an incredible leader. You could look him up on on YouTube or whatever, all the social stuff that you guys are into, you can find him. And he is such an incredible example of these principles that we teach. And I've learned so much from working with him in the last eight years. So those two have really been pivotal uh, leadership examples to me in my lifetime. That's great. And we have, uh, here, I'm gonna allow one of our students to unmute to ask. This is from Zaneeb. And Zaneeb is in Italy. Zaneeb, you should be able to unmute to ask. You had a pretty good question, go ahead. Hi, I'm Zina. I'm from Italy and my question is how can you keep going and do not give up when you're starting losing the discipline and the motivation? Yeah, I love that question. And you guys are at the start of your journey and you will undoubtedly come across a series of challenges and issues and mistakes that you will make. And the best thing you can do is embrace those things and recognize it's part of the learning experience. And the, the, the number one thing that you can do when you catch yourself in those moments is to take ownership. This idea of ownership that we're talking about is exactly what I mean. We have this idea of what we call extreme ownership. And that means that every, every challenge and every situation that I'm dealing with, if I can first and foremost look at that situation and ask myself, what was my hand in this? How did I contribute to this? That ownership piece always feels like a burden and people have a hard time because it's a whole lot easier to make an excuse or to cast blame on someone else. But the second you do those two things, you relinquish your control to solve the problem. So if you can instead take on that burden to say, this is my fault and to own it and say, hey, this is my fault, but you know what? Now you have the control to solve it, to actually take ownership of what happens next. So if you're not being disciplined, if you make a mistake, if you tarnish a relationship, if you, um, you know, insert all the challenges you're gonna face in the coming years, if you do all those things and you can first and foremost say, how can I make this my fault? Because I know that by doing that, I can now control the outcome and I can take control over what happens next. You will be in such a better spot and you will hopefully avoid the many, many mistakes I made in my life growing up um, and how to learn the hard way. That really the only way to solve those problems is by saying, hey, this is my fault and owning it and stepping up and, and finding a way to solve those problems. That is absolutely phenomenal. You kind of touched on this, but I, I end these with the same question every single time. And even though you touched on it and, and I got a lot out of this as, as a teacher, and I, I hope the students got a lot out of this too. It seems like they did. Um, what kind of advice can you impart on these kids, whether they want to go into uh, a role of leadership or they want to do something completely different that doesn't have to do with leadership? What kind of advice would you impart on them as they go off into the world? Well, first of all, Ralph, I would argue that every single student on this call is going to go into a role of leadership because how we define leadership at Echelon Front is any human being who interacts with other human beings. So I don't care if you're a leader in a traditional format where you're leading people. We talk about leadership at every level in an organization from the CEO of major corporations to frontline people who are just managing themselves and their mission and their piece of the mission. We talk about leadership in every capacity. So leadership in, in your workspace, leadership at home, leadership of yourself. And we also talk about this idea that leadership is a skill. And, and just like any skill, it can be learned and it can be practiced and it can be honed and it can be improved upon. So if you have this mindset that I'm not a leader, dismantle that right now. You are in fact a leader. And whether you go into a, a role like I have, which is a traditional leader of people and in a, in a company where we teach leadership, or you go into any other um, job that you might take on, you are a leader in that role and you have a responsibility to influence the people around you for the better. And that's really what leadership is about. What we teach is how to influence, how to use these principles that we talk about within your own life so that ultimately you can impact the lives of the people around you. So I would keep the team and the mission forward focus 
and you will benefit from that. But don't don't put yourself at the front of that. Too often, I think young leaders, especially, they really work towards you know what's in it for me and how do I get ahead and and how how do I make this about me? And if you just take a step back and you make it about the broader mission and the broader team and you work your butt off and you take ownership when you make mistakes, I promise you the, 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 the positive outcomes will come your way and you'll have opportunities beyond what you even thought was possible. This, you knocked it out of the park, Jamie. We can't thank you enough for talking to us. You heard it here first, guys. Everyone's going to be a leader, whether you think so or not. I love it. That's absolutely great. So, That's right. uh, Thank you all for joining us, and uh, I hope to see you guys on uh, our edutainments. We have a lot coming up. We'll have over 100 guest speakers this year for you guys. Uh, but before we let you go, uh, before I end the meeting for all, I'm going to unmute all. And can we all say thank you to Jamie for spending time with us today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.